Hello everyone, welcome back to our emergency medicine channel. Today I have come with the topic breakfast in emergency room. Today we shall be talking about this protocol. What is its utility in emergency room and what is its limitation? So let's start. Fluid management plays a vital role in management of sick patient which impacts the outcome as well. Volume status remains a challenge for the clinician working in emergency room wherein it remains an important practical question in ED when to give or when to remove fluid. Ultrasound plays a very important role in guidance of fluid management wherein initially only IVC along with cardiac function alone was taken into consideration for fluid management. IVC can be dilated due to other reasons like pulmonary hypertension and valvulopathies in which it can misguide the fluid management but it does not take into consideration of other organ congestion. Today talking about Vexels, an important bedside tool available in ED which helps to evaluate severity of venous congestion based on not just IVC but also liver kidney as well. Well, Vexels may not provide much information on the need for fluid but it may provide stop points for fluid resuscitation and identifies patients who are likely to tolerate and benefit from fluid removal. Generally under normal circumstances, venous compartment is highly compliant with high capacitance and therefore with increasing distance from the heart, the venous pulse is dampened so that in the smaller veins, flow becomes undulating and phasic in nature. While in states of right ventricular failure and fluid overload, venous compartment becomes congested, limit of venous capacitance are reached, normal dampening of the venous pulse due to compliant nature of the small veins is lost, pulsations are transmitted back into the smaller veins, wherein evaluation of this vessels help in identifying fluid overload. So let's see how Vexus is performed. So the first step is the evaluation of IVC followed by hepatic vein assessment followed by portal vein assessment and renal vein assessment as seen here. So let's see how do we identify these veins and how do we interpret the results of this. So first coming to IVC assessment, first step is to locate the IVC using a curvilinear probe by placing a probe in the subzipoid location in the sagittal plane. IVC measurement is taken 1 to 2 cm caudal to the entry of hepatic vein into the IVC. This is how IVC is visualized. The measurement is taken 1 to 2 cm caudal to the hepatic vein entry. Following that, we proceed with the measurement at this point and if the IVC diameter is less than 2 cm, then there is no congestion and the VEXA score is 0 and if IVC diameter is more than 2 cm then congestion is present. Further examination must be continued wherein we proceed with hepatic vein assessment. Next coming to the hepatic vein assessment, first is to locate the hepatic vein. Hepatic vein can be located by placing the probe in the right upper quadrant wherein any of the hepatic vein can be chosen. Any of this hepatic vein can be chosen. Next we have to assess this vessel with color Doppler wherein the flow will be away from the probe hence will be seen as blue color. Then place the pulse wave Doppler gate over the hepatic vein. This physiologic waveform consists of two predominant waves. The first and the larger wave is the systolic wave or S wave and the second and the smaller one is the diastolic or D wave. In the setting of worsening venous congestion, the magnitude of S wave will decrease as systolic phase venous flow decreases and eventually will become positive with worsening venous congestion corresponding to the reversal of blood flow. At this point, venous congestion is severe enough that flow will be away from the IVC and forward flow will only occur as the ventricle relaxes and fills during diastole. So next coming to portal vein assessment. First, the portal vein is located by placing the probe in the right upper quadrant that is in the mid axillary line. The portal vein are best identified by the presence of thick and hyperechoic line as seen in this image. Next is to confirm by the color Doppler wherein the flow will be towards the probe and the vein will be seen as red color. Next, place the pulse wave Doppler gate in the portal vein. As venous congestion increases and pressure from the hepatic vein is transmitted across the hepatocytes into the portal system, the flow becomes pulsatile. So the pulsatility index quantifies the degree of pulsatility. Pulsatility index is calculated by flow max minus the flow minimum divided by the flow max wherein the flow max is measured as the distance from the baseline to the peak of the wave and the flow minimum is measured from the baseline to the trough of the wave. So how do we interpret this? If the pulsatility index is 30% then it is normal. If the pulsatility index is between 30 to 49% then it is mild portal vein abnormality and if it is more than 50% then it is severe portal vein abnormality as seen in this image as well. Next coming to renal vein assessment. First step is to locate the renal vein. 
locate the interlobar or the arcuate renal vein by, by placing the probe in the right posterior axillary line. Next, use the color Doppler to identify the intrarenal veins and target the largest vein. The flow will be away from the probe and hence will be seen as blue color. This is how it will be seen on the ultrasound. We have to choose a largest vein among this and place the pulse wave Doppler gate. Normally, intrarenal venous flow constant and near monophasic as seen here mildly abnormal tracing show interruption in the flow and a systolic and a diastolic component of the tracing as seen in this image with severely worsening congestion there is only diastolic component present as seen here next how do we interpret the results of the scan wherein the success score is graded from 0 to 3 wherein if ivc is less than 2 cm then the grade is 0 if the ivc is more than 2 cm with mild venous congestion with no severe abnormal wave patterns, then the grade is 1. If the IVC is more than 2 cm with moderate venous congestion with at least one severely abnormal wave pattern, then the grade is then the grade is 2. If the IVC is more than 2 cm with severe venous congestion with more than two severely abnormal waveform, then the grade is 3. So, this is an interpretation of the same, wherein if the IVC is less than 2 cm, then the grade becomes 0. And if the IVC is more than 2 cm, then we have to proceed with assessment of hepatic vein, portal vein and renal vein. And following which it is graded accordingly as grade 1, 2, 3. So, this VEXA score results must be correlated with the clinical feature as well. Next, coming to the important limitations. Normally, increased intra-abdominal pressure can affect the IVC measurements as well. In chronic pulmonary hypertension, it can experience significant size remodeling. Portal vein can display a pulsatile flow in patient with AV malformations as well. So, one has to keep this in mind. In patient with stiff liver parenchyma, such as in cirrhosis or non-alcoholic fatty liver, transmission of the pressure from the right atrium through the liver sinusite is dampened. This may lead to a non-pulsatile portal vein even in presence of severe venous congestion. So, this must be taken in consideration. Next, coming to renal disease, wherein the intrarenal venous Doppler is technically difficult to obtain, which can lead to suboptimal recording. It is also possible that parenchymal renal disease could alter intrarenal Doppler venous waveforms. So, one must keep this in consideration. Considering these limitations, it is important to avoid interpretation any of these findings in isolation. Performing the entire protocol, including IVC, hepatic vein, portal vein and renal vein, increases the accuracy of the evaluation. None of the findings can be taken in isolation. They have to be taken all together and interpreted. The findings of intrarenal venous Doppler along with CV CVP finding can be taken into consideration in pediatric for fluid guidance which has a moderate level of evidence. This VEXUS protocol has also been shown to predict AKI. So, hope this was useful. Thank you.